The Prince is in the Tower. These are our subjects for our short documentary today. The Prince is in the Tower refers to the mystery of the fate of the deposed King Edward V of England and his younger brother Richard of Shrewsbury, Duke of York. Heirs to the throne of King Edward V of England, the brothers were the only sons of the King by his Queen Elizabeth Woodville. Living at the time of their father's death in 1483, aged 12 and 9 years old respectively, they were lodged in the Tower of London by their paternal uncle and England's then regent, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, supposedly in preparation for Edward V's forthcoming coronation. Before the king could be crowned, he and his brother were declared illegitimate and Gloucester ascended the throne as Richard III, and the boys slowly disappeared into the tower and were eventually never seen again. Where we pick up on the princess in the tower, in our time, is here, the bloody tower. It's where the boys were murdered. Interestingly enough, it was later where Sir Walter Raleigh was prison imprisoned a story for another time, isn't it? This is the Great Port Colours. And here is the room set out. Very much as it would have been all those years ago. Tower got its name because of the murder of those two boys. And that's where we are going to now. Up the stairs, very steep and narrow stairs, if I may say so. And this takes us up to the room of the night that the boys were murdered. you for a moment. We are inside the bloody tower now, in the very room that the princes in the tower were murdered in. Here we go. The royal house of York. Richard, the king's brother, King Edward IV, and Queen Elizabeth. And four-year-old son, Prince Edward. Nine-year-old Prince Richard. There is no evidence that the 
key which is a bird is challenged and is killed at the battle of the world. The winner becomes the first human king, Henry VII. The new king marries Elizabeth, his sister, the Muslim princess. The room is endowed with the fact. Right to save Richard III, death and the dragon. where the bones were found. That's where we'll go now, so join me for that part. And here we are, at the White Tower. As said in the, the room in the bloody tower, there is no conclusive evidence that the boys were killed. Yet they disappeared, and yet the bones of two young boys were found in a wooden chest where we're going to go now. And in the 1930s, those bones were examined and found to be the bones of two children of approximately the right ages. Since then, the bones have lain in their sarcophagus in Westminster Abbey. And the only way to tell if that is the prince's in the tower is going to be to open that sarcophagus, do DNA results on the, or DNA tests on the bones, which can be done because don't forget Richard III, the king in the car park, was found not too many years ago, so they've got Plantagenet DNA. And some say that King Charles is on the verge of allowing it to happen so that will be the only way that we prove that he's proven whether those bones are the bones of the princes in the tower and this is where the bones were found under the stairs buried in a wooden chest and in the wooden chest where the bones and about the bones were rich cloths and velvets which in the reign of King Charles II allured them to the fact that they would have been the bones of two very noble children. So that's where the bones of the boys were found. Not that far from where they were killed in that room there and uh, when King Charles the bones were found in the reign of King Charles II, the Merry Monarch. He, and everyone else more or less, put two and two together that they were the princes in the tower. And that's where they was taken from here, or the bones they was discovered in 1674. They believed them to be the bones of the princes in the tower. Then they were taken to Westminster Abbey where King Charles had them buried in a sarcophagus. And that's where we're going to go now. So join me at Westminster Abbey for the sarcophagus or tomb that is said to contain the bones of these boys and uh, join me there and here is that sarcophagus which lies in Innocent's Corner of Westminster Abbey at the feet of the great Queen Bess Elizabeth I this is the sarcophagus that contains the bones or supposedly contains the bones of the princes in the tower um, created by Sir Christopher Wren, especially for these to be contained in. Um, the whole inscription is in Latin, but I've got a translation of that, yeah, so here we go. It reads, Here lie interred the remains of Edward V, King of England, and Richard, Duke of York, whose long-desired, much sought-after bones, after over a 190 years, were found interred deep beneath the rubble of the stairs that led up to the chapel of the White Tower, 
on the 17th day of July in the year of our Lord 1674. So, as I say, the bones were discovered in 1674 by workmen carrying out work in the Tower of London, at some stairs, and then the bones were interred four years after that in this sarcophagus, made by my favourite historical Londoner, Sir Christopher Wren, and they were uh, interred four years after they were found in 1678. Um, and there's a lot of unanswered questions about these bones. Are they actually the princes in the tower? And it's an interesting one because the bones were removed and examined in 1933 by the archivist of Westminster Abbey, Lawrence Tanner, a leading anatomist of his day, and Professor William Wright and the president of the Dental Association, George Northcroft. By measuring certain bones and teeth, they concluded the bones belonged to two children around the correct ages of the princes. But there was, and still is, much criticism of the 1933 examination, on the grounds that they went in assuming that the bones are 100% those of the princes in the tower. And this image here, and this one, are the 1933 images from when the sarcophagus was opened. Since then, there has always been interest in re-excavating the skeletons of the two princes, but Queen Elizabeth II never granted approval required for such testing of interred royal people. In 2022, Tracy Borman, Joint Chief Curator of Historic Royal Palaces, stated that King Charles III holds a very different view on the subject to that of the late Queen and could potentially allow further investigation into the bones. And that's the only way that this one is actually going to be answered, is it definitely them, by opening that, this sarcophagus up and doing DNA testing, which would be very easy to do now, because if this is the genuinely the bones of the princes in the tower in this sarcophagus, they'll be easily able to DNA match them, because don't forget, not too many years ago, the remains of their uncle, King Richard III, the king in the car park, were found. So they have the DNA of a dead Plantagenet, and they also have the DNA of a living Plantagenet, who's a descendant from the Plantagenets, of course. So that will really will be the only way that it's answered. And there are questions around this one, because in the 1670s, they jumped on it that it was the princes in the tower and buried them as such. But other bones have been found in antiquity and since 1670s in the tower of children that could have been the princes. And more interestingly, in 2012, in the Chapel of St George at Windsor, near the tomb of the prince's parents, King Edward and Queen Elizabeth Woodville, was found a vault containing the remains of two people in two lead coffins. And some conjecture that that may be the boys being so very, very near to the parents. And that one will also require royal approval to open up and do DNA on those those bodies because being sealed in lead coffins they could be pretty well preserved so as I say this is a pretty bleak unanswered one that will only be answered when these tombs are opened and the DNA is taken and if that occurs you can rest your sweet life I will be covering any information that comes out on it so I hope you all found this one interesting or informative at least thanks very much for watching take care